Well, uh, Senator Coburn, good to have you on board. Let's first good of morning. all, let, let's set out what your principle is here, is that you can't, you know, uh, get these um, offsets if you don't have this all paid for up front. You, you can't give the aid if you don't have it paid for up front. And perhaps uh, it would prevent <coughs> loading up these disaster bills with other stuff. Is that correct? Well, uh, uh, yeah, I'd say essentially the, the problem is, is what you just heard is why we're seventeen and a half trillion dollars in debt. Right. Uh, the porker senators around here that want to spend more money for parochial benefits right. rather than do what's in the best long-term interest of the country always vote to add things on to a Christmas tree package that doesn't have to be paid for. And so, you know, they basically it's free money, so I want more. Yeah. And the fact is, is our country is in trouble. <clears throat> and I've been consistent. You know, 1995 bombings in Oklahoma City, I was in Congress. We paid for that. We offset it and paid for it. We made a priority choice of helping Oklahoma City by cutting spending somewhere else. And it's a, the lamest excuse in the world when we have at least $200 billion worth of waste, fraud, and duplication to say, oh, my gosh, we can't do that. We have to go borrow the money against the very kids you're saying you want to help. Right. So it's morally wrong. It's repugnant to me. And it's the lamest excuse career politicians can use. And that's why our country's in trouble, that kind of thinking. Well, you understand, though, in a situation like this, we're looking at pictures right now of the tornado damage and uh, the recovery effort. It, it, it's be... all the political game, yeah, Mika. It's a political game. There's nothing. There's $11.6 billion sitting in a bank account waiting to help people in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. This is all a game. And it's a, it's a crass political game because I was being asked these questions before we even pulled the dead people out of the rubble. Well, so, I, so, so it's just typical Washington BS, quite I, frankly. I understand. And in situations like this, when you stand by your position, you'll be accused of being uncaring. So let me ask you how we rectify this situation. I mean, uh, Steve Ratner on the show yesterday brought up an idea that was suggested in the Simpson Bowles list of ideas to set up a fund uh, in five-year right. cycles. Why can't That's we right. get something don't, like that done? Because the people who want to spend money for their own parochial benefit, they don't want that. They want the opportunity, to, just like the Sandy Bill. Mm -hmm. Look, I was for the first $20 billion on the Sandy Bill. The last $40 billion isn't going to be spent for five years. But yet we didn't have to make a priority choice within Congress. We just borrowed it against the future, and we added things on that didn't go through committee. They weren't parsed. And so what you had was an earmarking parochial mm. benefit the inside people who are well-connected. And that's what happened. <clears throat> and so it's not about not helping people who have a need. It's about helping the people who have a need and not hurting the rest of us. Uh, Senator Coburn, Harold Ford, good morning. If, if hey, a bill Harold, how are you? Good, sir. If a bill comes to the floor, to the Senate floor, that does not include offsets, I have two questions, does not include offsets, will you support it? Uh, and, and two, unrelated, I'd love to come to get your thoughts on the IRS, but, but before, would you, will you support a bill if it comes to the floor? The the, the, we're not, not going to need a bill. For relief? The, this, we're not going to need a bill. The, most of this, most of the property damage was insured. Uh, this will be a 200, 250, maybe 300 million dollar cost for the federal government out of the FEMA fund. Uh, Joplin was 190 million dollars and they had more damage than we did. I mean, it's the same old game. Washington creating a crisis when none exists so they can ex advantage themselves when in fact we've got 11.6 billion dollars sitting in the fund. So it's, it's a non-question, Junior. Brian. Are you? Sorry, I just want to ask one more question on this because uh, Mika and I just got back from more Oklahoma and responsibility for paying for these isn't just on the federal government. If, if, I assume you're going to allow these people to rebuild in their neighborhoods and the question is should you require them to have whether it's the safe rooms or the shelters or the bunkers and for a lot of these people it's cost prohibitive. So who pays for it? Should you require it? And it's free will for them to live there but they have to protect themselves moving forward. Well, it, <clears throat> look, uh, those aren't decisions that should be made at the federal government level. That's the decisions of Oklahoma. Matter of fact, I tell you, if you're living in that area more in Oklahoma, the likelihood of being hit by another tornado is about zero uh, in terms of odds. So the fact is, is that's not a decision for the federal government. That's a decision for the people of Oklahoma. Uh, uh, and they get to make that decision. Look, the death toll was terrible. But it was very, very low for this, what we ex experienced. What, what's that tell you? 
But it tells you if people have common sense and figure out how to do these things. We don't need a big federal government telling Oklahoma what we'll put in our homes when we rebuild them or not. Uh, <clears throat> but we'll make the judgment. We'll make the decisions, and if we want to add that to our building code, we'll do it. Well, frankly, just to be uh, honest with you, the odds were the same a week and a half ago, and it happened again. So that that point no, is no, the odds weren't the same. Well, that, yes, that's, they were. That's, it, com it, that's completely wrong. If, if you've had two tornadoes in 14 years, yes, and then it's you're saying the odds of that is the same as going forward, that's not I, right I at all. I don't think so. You need I think to go the back odds and check your or decrease you need based to on check what you your have statistics one. class. It, no, it's it, it doesn't change the odds. But I don't want to I don't want to talk about that. Specifically, because you have 11.6 billion, and it, it, one of the things you could do to help these people is to help them build these things on top of rebuilding. So, if you're talking about paying for it and offsetting it, you also have to talk about what's the best way to spend this money, and wouldn't that be a federal uh, well, a choice I, I, as well? I, I, what, I, what I would tell you is, we don't do a very good job about the best way to spend money. All you have to do is look at the Hurricane Sandy bill; that two thirds of it isn't going to help the people in New York. It's going to help the well connected and the well healed. So, you know, it, part of that's nonsense. Uh, we've got too much government now. Uh, what you've already seen in Oklahoma is a complete uh, voluntary response. <clears throat> Almost $50 million has been raised and, and given for the cause down there. You've, you've seen tremendous neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor response where less than 25 people had to spend the night in the shelter of everybody that was displaced because neighbors are helping neighbors. You watch how we handle this. We'll clean it up, we'll go on, we'll get by, and we'll rebuild. And what we'll say is if you want to help us, fine. If you don't, we'll take care of it ourselves.